If you saw my video on the F601, which I made recently, you may remember that I said I used to have an F100. Uh, strip down the F100 a little bit and you end up with this. This is the Nikon F80. This was released in uh, January 2000. So this is a 35mm full frame single lens reflex camera. Uh, in the Nikon uh, tradition and it is well it's quite a nice camera maybe not as good as the F100 but again like the F601 these are cheap as chips because like the F601 hipsters don't want them Hipsters don't want cameras that could be possibly mistaken for a modern camera. Uh, they don't want a camera that to the uneducated eye would be indistinguishable from the D850 that I'm filming this on. So these cameras with lenses, again, you're talking about 40 to 50 pounds and that is an absolute bargain for a camera of this quality. I'm going to change the camera position around so we can see the camera a bit closer. Uh, you think we, you know, make up your own mind, but I think this is really very nice. Before I go any further about the F80, just an observation. This is my D800, and notice this end of the camera. Instead of a rotating wheel, although it does actually have a rotating wheel, it has a series of buttons. Contrast that with my D610 and as you can see that has a more traditional layout. Here is my F601 and again we're back to the buttons. Go forward 10 years and when we get to the F80 and we're back to the dial. This is kind of signaling from Nikon those cameras which it deems or are intended to be at the time of manufacture the more serious cameras tend to have this kind of layout buttons rather than a dial and if you look at the uh, chart of Nikon cameras over the years particularly the digital ones you'll see that all of those are designated a professional or semi-professional cameras will have the buttons rather than the dial. So this, while this camera is a kind of stripped back F100 film camera, it's very much designed as an amateur camera rather than a professional or semi-professional camera. And I can tell that simply by looking at this end of the camera. That said, this is still a very capable little camera. Let's have a look through the controls. I have controls on the end here. I depress this little button and I can have the camera set up a single shot, um, continuous shot, self timer, or I can even do multiple exposures. I have a bracketing button on the back which allows me to change the flash exposure, the flash is a little pop-up flash. Uh, on this side I have a different exposure modes so I can go from uh, spot, center weighted or matrix mode. I have a little button on the top which would allow me to uh, illuminate the display in low levels. I can over and under expose the frames uh, according to different lighting addition, uh, issues and of course I have the now more traditional on off switch. I also have two dials on this camera. One dial operates the aperture and the other operates the shutter speed. That's particularly useful if I have it on manual mode where I can choose whatever combination 
of shutter speeds and apertures that I feel is right for the shop. Shot. Uh, here I have aperture priority where I select the aperture and the camera selects the shutter speed. This is the other way around. I select the shutter speed and the camera selects the aperture. Or in this case in P, the camera selects everything. There is a possibility for custom modes in here and of course I can change the ISO should I want to. However, most of the ISO is uh, recorded by the DX coding on the inside of the camera and you can see that it, it's a uh, vertically running metal blade shutter. All I do is pull the film over to this point here, close the back up and then I am good to go. Front of the camera I can change between uh, single, fo single point focus or continuous focus and here I have a very, very useful feature on any camera, which is a depth of field preview. I think that's about it. I mean, it is very capable. As I said before, uh, these cameras don't have an enormous retail value because they are of no interest to hipsters. They have no interest to people who are not interested in photography. Those people who just want to pose around with an old Zenith B or uh, something even older and less capable. This however is a nice capable camera and it is a real crying shame that it doesn't get the recognition that it deserves. It's small, it's light, it's capable and it has of course the uh, Nikon F mount which gives it uh, an enormous capability in terms of other lenses you can use for it. Still, grab yourself a bargain. You want one of these, it's not going to cost you a lot of money. The Nikon F80.